Hello, and welcome back to Indigenous Storytime. I'm Cassie, and today I'm going to be reading How the Stars Fell into the Sky, a Navajo Legend. This is written by Jerry Alton and illustrated by Lisa Desimini. <laughs> and uh, it's the story of how the stars came to be in the sky. When the pulse of the first day carried it to the rim of the night, first woman said to first man, the people must know the laws. To help them, we must write laws for all to see. Write them in the sand, he told her, but the wind will blow them away, she answered. Write them on the water then, he said, and turned to go, having more important matters on his mind. But they will disappear the moment I write them on the water, the first woman called out. The first man turned back impatiently and looked at her squatting there on the rim of the night, a blanket of stars at her feet. Why don't you write them in the sky, he said. Take your jewels there and write them in the sky. And so she began, slowly, first one and then the next, placing her jewels across the dome of night, carefully designing her pattern so all could read it. But first woman was not alone. Behind a low tree, Coyote crouched, watching her as she crafted her careful mosaic on the blackberry cloth of night. He crept closer. What are you doing? He called to her in a voice that sounded like the whine of an arrow whistling in the wind. Why are you tacking up the night sky with your jewels? Oh, she answered, deliberately shifting a star. I am writing the laws so that all the people can read them. There will be no confusion if we can always see the laws. Her hands glowed from the warmth of the stars she was touching, and she smiled as she toiled. May I help? Coyote asked. First woman nodded. Begin here, she said, and she handed him a star. Coyote hung the star and stepped back to look. He hung another and another. But for each star he hung, First Woman's blanket held a hundred thousand more. This is slow work, he grumbled. Writing the laws could take many moons, she said, and began humming to herself. Can't we find a faster way and be done? Coyote asked. Why finish, she answered. What is there to do next that is half so important as writing the laws? The people will see these laws before they enter their hogans at night. The young mother will sing of them to her child. The lonely warrior crouching in an unknown country will look up and warm himself by them. Writing the laws may be what I do each night for the rest of my life. But Coyote lacked First Woman's patience. He loved best to see a job finished. Impatiently, he gathered two corners of First Woman's blanket and before she could stop him, he flung the remaining stars out into the night, spilling them in wild disarray, shattering First Woman's careful patterns. First Woman leaned far into the night and watched the tumbling stars. What have you done, you foolish animal? She shrieked at Coyote. He crept away while First Woman wept because there was no undoing 
what Coyote had done. As the pulse of the second day brought it into being, the people rose and went about their lives, never knowing in what foolish haste Coyote had tumbled the stars, never knowing the reason for the confusion that would always dwell among them.